Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about importing data into R and I'm going to be using the latest version of R at this time which is 4.0.2 and there's been some minor changes which I think are important noting from slightly older versions that I've used in the past especially in the import process uh, and also in the plotting process so uh, I'll either do these all in one video in, or in a series but let's just start by importing some data so I am going to import some data so I'm going to give it a name so for those of you who are very new to R I'm going to use name one you guys put whatever name you like like data one DF you just don't put any spaces or punctuation and you'll always be good try not to ever use names of functions uh, as names okay so what, what did we decide I'm gonna call this uh, let, let me call it something a little better like data one okay I use the assignment operator this is the assignment operator these two symbols together make the uh, uh, form the assignment operator in R this is a name okay now to the right of the assignment operator you can think of this like an arrow I'm gonna type some function that's gonna do something this guy is a name and this guy assigns whatever I do on this side to this name alright so let's get that clear so read.csv why because I'm reading a comma separated variable file in I'm gonna do it the old uh, easy way file choose which is gonna open up uh, a little box for me to choose my file and I'm gonna just choose this data set uh, that's about used cars I'm gonna open this up and it looks like nothing has happened if you're new to R you're like what happened well I got the prompt back so this is good so I can type some code that's a good sign that things went well well if I know that I'm importing a data set first thing I want to look is the structure of the data set so if I look at the structure of data one now be careful here you want to type the name exactly how you typed it here or else R will give you an error message because it doesn't know if you used capital D here you will get an error message so let me just show you as an example it is sensitive okay object data one not found why I named data my data set data one why is it not found well because R is cap sensitive so if you type it the exact way that you typed it when you named on the import you will get not an error you'll get the result of structure which is very interesting it tells you what the object is the object is a data frame that's an official type of object in R a data frame is what you would think it would be a matrix form data frame which means some rows some columns how many rows tells you 150 rows 150 observations syn synonymous for rows how many columns six columns six variables variable another another syn synonym for columns features okay so of course variable is not synonymous with columns in general language but when we're dealing with data sets we generally organize our features and variables along the columns so you can think of those as synonymous okay so we got six columns and 150 rows and then we're given all six rows the titles of each the, the names of each of the variables or the columns and next to each one we're told what type of variable it is R when it imports makes some decisions on its own if it sees that there are numbers in the column like year had these numbers in it then it will either give it the distinction of int which is short for integer or num which is short for numerical both of these for most intents and purposes int and num are just numbers integer is clearly just number without decimal places number can be numerical can be a number with decimal places but again for most intents and purposes these two identical for us next something like Yeet model it looks at the values under model it sees that that there's words in there if there are words in there any words any characters other than numbers then it's going to not call it an int or a num it's going to call it character now in the past this function and I've made videos on this will automatically assign a factor to those types of variables now the most present version of R that I'm using here 4.0.2 is going to import them as plain characters so for for again for your purposes there is very little distinction between these two I'll explain what the distinction is in a moment but 
First notice that CHR stands for character and that's because model had character values underneath. Then price, mileage, both numbers, so integer, no decimal, so integer. Color and transmission, clearly we have words, so character, character, okay? Now, for most purposes, character is fine. When we get to some other functions, like making a plot that has different kinds of colors and symbols for different values of another categorical variable, you might want to convert some of these characters to factors. So how do you do that? So that's very simple. There's two ways you could go about this. You can manually convert each. So the way you call on any variable is use the name of the data set then the dollar sign, the name of the variable. So I've explained this in kind of more elementary videos. So hopefully you've, you've gotten past that. So if I go data one dollar sign, um, let's do color. I'm going to extract this column out of data one with this code. Okay. If I hit enter, you're going to see a whole bunch of colors because it just extracted that column. Okay. All right. So now if I want to do anything with color, I have to always use this to pull it out. So what are some things I might want to do with it? I might want to look at a frequency table, for example, not to kind of take it um, our focus off into frequency tables, but it's pretty self-explanatory what a frequency table is. You can do them for non-numerical values. OK, um, so that's fine. It works even though table, as we saw, was a character vector. Okay, right, Tab sorry, uh, color was a character vector. But what if I tried to do a plot? So let me try to do a plot. I'm gonna do a plot of data one, dollar sign. Let's put price on the y-axis, data one, dollar sign. You've presumably done a little bit of plotting, so I'm not gonna focus on these details here. Uh, you, do I have a mileage? Let's put mileage on the x-axis. Let's take a look at that. Oh, cool. I get a little scatter plot here, which is really cool. It shows me that there's a negative relationship between mileage and price. As mileage goes up, price seems to be going down on average, right? Very clearly, look at this pattern. Look at this clustering of points. It's definitely in this direction, inverse. Okay, great. What if I wanted to add another piece of information onto this plot? Let's say I wanted to add the color of these cars or maybe I'll do something simpler like transmission because transmission there's only two color there was like eight or nine uh, either way it would be the same amount of work uh, what if I wanted to add the color so I wanted these points not to all be black but to be a different color based on what type of transmission this car had so if they were automatic maybe they're gonna be black dots and if they're manual transmissions they're gonna become red dots what if I want to do something like that well I can just update this code Okay, and you, we may get an error message here because this, is, this used to work in the older versions of R. So if I do color here and I simply typed, um, uh, we want to do transmission, right? Data one dollar sign transmission. We will get an error message and the plot will go blank. Okay, so that's not working. How about if we do as that integer because colors can be referred have codes. So for example, let me let me show you before I even go to a next possible solution, which I also know. Um, so if I say one, I get black dots, which is the default, which is what I had before. If I say two, I get red dots. Colors have number codes. OK, and if it's important for you to know that there's always a legend you can kind of look at to see what color gives you, what numbers give you what color but uh, it's enough for you to know this for now so you can control all the colors with with this but what if you want the colors to change based on the transmission so back to what we were doing so data one transmission didn't work it got this error message right because it was reading in words automatic and manual which is I just happen to know is the other type of transmission okay and that's not a type of color so R gives you an error message but what if we convert it to an integer so there's a function called as that integer which can take a categorical variable like transmission right it's got two levels two categories it's categorical auto manual and you can convert it to numbers so alphabetically a comes before M, automatic comes before manual, so automatic will become one, manual will become two. Let's hit enter, another error. Wow, this used to work in the older version of R. Why? Because when you imported in the old version of R, 
older versions of R, I should say, when we import it, just using this basic code and not specifying anything further in read.csv, things like transmission, color, and price were automatically converted, not, not price, sorry, and model were automatically converted to factors and not left as just characters. So in order to fix this and get this code to work, we can do one thing. We can convert transmission to a factor. So how do we do that? So data one, transmission, that would just give us all the column of transmission, right? And I'm going to assign this to something else, which is going to be factor. So I'm basically, this is how you can convert a character variable to factor variable. Now, now all that's going to do, and you can check data one, is going to convert transmission to a factor. Factor is just a very convenient way to store a categorical variable in R. It's much more memory efficient. It stores, it finds how many levels you have. So there's two distinct levels for transmission, automatic and manual. We've been talking about it. It'll assign the number one to the first one alphabetically and two to the second. There's ways to override that, but we don't need to worry about that for now. So these, so instead of seeing the word automatic and manual all over the place, we'll have one here and two here everywhere there's a manual, okay? And this can be, should be able to be converted into our plot. So now transmission is a factor and I hit enter with the very first plot that I tried to create and I get a nice plot. If you take a look at this, I got black dots and I got red dots because black is number one for color. Red is number two. So everywhere is manual. I got one everywhere. It was sorry. Everywhere was automatic. I got black and everywhere it was uh, manual. I got red and you could also make a legend here if you like. So let's just make a legend. I don't want you to get too, too bogged down with this code, but um, just so you know, this is a good thing to do. You could specify where the legend goes. Legend is going to have, um, we're going to have the levels of, um, data one dollar sign transmission. And let's just close it right here and just see. So we get in the little legend working here. Okay. But we still want to get the dots in there and the, so and the colors as well. So we're going to go color right equals and then here we're going to do one comma two right for the two colors and then the the, the plotting character is just going to be a simple dot boom okay so don't get too bogged down with the the legend code um at least you know how to make a plot uh, and also this also addresses some of the problems that were, uh, some of the new thing some some of the problems that may arise from that simple change that's occurred since R has be decided to bring in uh, categorical variables as characters by default instead of as factors by default. So let's go back and let me show you another way you might be able to solve all this problem. So instead of having to manually convert these character vectors to factors, write in the code of the read.csv. So we're going to re-import this. Let me call this data2. So I got a new data set. I'm not going to override the old one. There is a, an argument that you can add to read.csv, which is strings as factors. You see, if you double tab, you'll get a list of all the arguments. Strings as factors. And this now is set to false. So we're going to set this to true. This is the one that we've been talking about. So strings as factors. And strings as factors. We're going to set this to true. Your true should be capital. Enter. I'm going to go find my data set again. Use car. Same exact data set. It's imported. Let's take a look at the structure of this guy. Wow. Look at this. Model, color, and transmission all got assigned factor distinctions as opposed to character distinctions. So, so from here forward, we can go ahead and just run that same plot that we did, except let's update this to data two, right? Because if we're doing data one, it's going to take the columns from data one, even though they're almost identical, right? And we're going to get the same plot. And I didn't have to manually convert transmission to a factor. Okay. So what's the moral here and what I really want to get across this import process has slightly changed slightly and it's changed in this this argument 
has be, been used to be by default, meaning if you didn't specify, which most of the times you just leave it alone, it used to be true. Now it's become false. So in order to get it to be true, you actually have to specify it. So in order to get these guys to be factors as opposed to characters, which doesn't really matter except in these rare cases where you get to these situations where you're trying to do the plot like this, you can do your import process. At the very beginning, you can go and import, or maybe if you've already imported, re-import your, uh, your strings as factors as true. Okay, and be careful of this typing. You see the R is case sensitive. The A, the A and as is capital and the F and factor is capital. Everything else is lowercase. True and false always have to be in caps. Okay, all right, so I hope this was helpful. Just a little blip in, in, uh, in uh, sometimes happens, things change as newer versions of software are released. Okay, uh, so till next time, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.